goes in the front. Oh yeah, look at that. The other one you took a video of, the power cord's built in. Oh. This one uses the, the standard. This is an earlier model. But the screen looks a lot better on this one. It doesn't have all that stuff in it. Right, they didn't get that water in the back. Power cable over here. You can get to this outlet. Look at this. These are these are. Um, yeah, you just push them in and they open. Oh wow! Wow! And in the back is just that's just the top of the case. Yeah, it has the same stuff. I packed it. Okay, I'm pissed. I can I, I can pull it out for you. But the way they put these together, there's screws here, there's screws down here. There's screws on the back. Um, you got to remove these. You got to remove those two uh, uh, to get in. When you just were... to get the cover off. Then right. you got to remove this with six screws in order to get into the drives and stuff like that. Right. And that just gets you to the chassis. To take the drives out, you got to remove two, four, six, that's eight, why you got a nine, pile of screws. ten. Yeah, that's why I have a pile of screws over there. Yeah. And that's and then four more in the front. And that gets you the drive chassis out. Then you got two more screws. Uh, for the drives right. on the bottom, it's 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 a, it's a real mess getting in. But this is our cleanest one, and this is the one that was actually on display in the museum. But if we can get one working between the two, because the boards swap out and everything, so if it's a logic problem or a drive problem, this one's definitely the the case and the keyboard's nicer. It's pretty much the same keyboard. But no, I meant like it looks it's, it's cleaner. cleaner. Yeah, it, it's it looks definitely cleaner. more presentable. The other one looks a little dirty. Here is Zorba what? Uh, Zorba. Which, that's all it's called? Yep. That's a CPM machine. Pretty interesting key yeah. Yeah. Which may or may not be actually an F. Any idea what's wrong with it? Still trying to figure out. We don't, we don't know if we have a, a valid boot disk. We're trying to create it from images. And we're not having any success. They, they use these Canon MDD 210 drives, which I believe are... Um, 80 track compatible. Mm. So we don't know if the image we found oh, is a 40 it. track or 80 track or or a different speed even. Nothing to do but to try it. Huh? Yes, and there's there's a whole bunch of screws you got to remove just to get to the disk drive. What a pain it is. And here's the case down here already. We have a second one here. And this is the carrying case for it. Or this is another. This is actually another computer. Yes. It's another Zorba. It's another Zorba. That one doesn't get as far as this uh, one could do. I think I remember getting it out of uh... Reminds me of the Osborne uh, one, which we have right here. Yes. <laughs> oh, you need the, uh, the leather handle, right? You have the leather handle. That or, part works way off. And this one worked, or you, I saw you had it apart. It, it, it comes off, but I think something's wrong with the drives. It gives me a boot error. Yeah, kind of like when I'm dealing with the Zorba. So that's my weekend. Dealing with boot errors. Boot errors. But the screen looks a little. It's got this is like a, a glass plate over top of the CRT. They're sealed on, and it got some stuff behind it. Oh, little, so it has to be ripped, peeled away, and then cleaned from behind. Yeah. But this does actually have a composite output. You go up to a composite monitor. Oh yeah, you were plugged into yeah. another monitor. Right? Yeah, right there's the composite output, and that's actually an option for these. It comes on the board, as you can see down here. That's the composite board. Wonderful. What's that drive? That's another drive over there? That's, that's actually drive A. This is drive B. Okay. And there's your boot up screen. And that Zorba does blink bright and dim like that by default. I thought there was something wrong with the display. I kept playing with the, uh, yeah, the brightness, but that actually does that. And then I hit return to boot it and drive loads up, but it's having trouble reading the image. So it's reading something, it just has an error reading, and it tells you what sector it's having problem with, if you can see through all that uh, garbage. So what is the troubleshooting uh, process here next? Or At this point here, disk, we, we can image? try creating an image from you know on, on an old PC, which can write the same kind of disk. We just have to make sure that the the backup image that somebody somewhere created before put it on the internet uh, is actually the right type that they didn't make a mistake in their image. Got it. So the only other way we know to fix this is if we had another working Zorba and created the boot disk directly. 
Oh, it's not a bad keyboard. Not a bad keyboard at all. But these are kind of a pain. If you ever had to replace or work on these keys, you actually have to peel up this bezel. It's stuck on it. You have to peel up that bezel like to get on. to it. It's, it's like a yeah, big glued sheet, but apparently, and, and the technical manual says do this. You have to peel this away to get to the four holes for the screws that hold this keyboard on. Right. Now the back will come off separately, but if you want to get anywhere in working on these keys, you have to mess this up. Now, what were you saying about the compatibility that it was one of the more compatible CPM? For CPM machines, since every CPM machine seems to work with their own CPM format, uh, especially reading and writing their disks, this one, the way it was designed is if we can get it to boot, we can also work with disks that were formatted on a K-Pro or, you know, some of the other CPM machines, whereas you don't necessarily have that. So that's interesting. So CPM as, a, as an operating system wasn't 100% compatible from one computer to the next. Basically. And this one kind of is like, if you're going to read archive disk, this is the one to try it on first. Well, I don't know. Until we get it booted, we're, we're actually, we don't know what we can do with it until we can get it booted. What year would you say this machine came out? Uh, I think 83, 84. And this is an American company? Uh, I believe so, yes. Uh, there is like one website out there dedicated to it, but it's actually a German-hosted website. Yeah, I think it's a .de uh, site, but it... They, they actually did make, the, the company who makes this, and I forget their name, oh no, Telcon, Telcon Industries, that's who made it. After about a year or so, they sold these rights to another company, and that company redesigned it. Uh, they actually put the monitor on the right side and the disc drives on the left. So this is one of the early revs. Yes, this is like an original rev type, yeah. And sorry about my food in the picture. No, no, I didn't, I made sure not to get it in there. And then you can put option ROMs in. There's uh, three empty ROM slots, and it even tells you on the motherboard which memory address they map to. Nice. 